Welcome to the Sports Editor. We've had a fantastic interview with former Springbok and Supersport presenter Kobani Bobo. Kobani gives us an overview of Super Rugby and obviously with the delay that we've had and how we're going to go forward as well as what impact the finances has on the competition. We'll also give a look out for his book that he's written and please wait till the end of the video to see what he has in store for, for us. Please like, comment and even share this post. Thanks very much. Have a good one. Welcome to the Sports Editor. Thank you so much for being on the show. It's really good to chat to you. Oh, it's a pleasure, Paula. I could not wait. I'm talking right here at the time. It's, uh, yeah. it's a relief and uh, somehow to appear. Yeah, it is indeed. So, I think we started obviously with Super Rugby. Um, and the Australian sides were really in, in a good, good position at the moment. And they seem to pick up a lot of momentum. Do you think that's just a stage for them, or they're going to well, dominate um, t next season? Let's say. I think I think what has started to happen, um, the way Australia sort of lost a bit was they the sport pack was not as dominant as they used to be, especially if you take it back in Super Rugby mm. and back to the to the great Australian teams. They had a, such a good pack, and they were very um, hard nosed. Uh, very experienced, and they had lots of players who were world class in their positions. I mean, we can mention the John Eels to to the Michael Hoopers, who maybe for him born in the wrong decade yeah. because I mean he's been an outstanding player, but then you can't sort of uh, there's a casting shadow form which in the core. But mm. that's what I think has been the difference. The forward pack and a forward game has gone strength to strength. Uh, the influence of Jake White at the Brumbies when they made it to the playoffs and the Brandies have kept on to that and using those fundamentals and principles to to exploit so that they can get these uh, witty very uh, cunning backline plays and now what has happened is that the structures of the younger players coming in and the uh, and Australian rugby sort of losing out on so many uh, high profile sports in Australia the, the youngsters have really taken up the challenge of stepping up and really showing what Australian rugby is about and mm. what we, what we, the older generation, got accustomed to. Um, and it's been encouraging to see younger players, seeing young teams like the Reds really uh, stepping up, players improving with their skill set and how they apply and their, in, and their application to the game. Uh, Taniela Tupu, the tight end from the Reds, really showing up now, mm. scrumming wise. And then at the same time, there's still the man who'll be chasing after, uh, I mean, uh, just from memory, watching that Sunwolves game, which was in the 70th minute odd. And there was a line break and the trial was scored and the man next to him was the same a tight end, Tanela Tupu, who could uh, have the engine still scrum, still be an effect and a threat when he runs with the ball, dominating with the tackles. And I think there's a whole lot of pride that has come to yeah. the whole structure when it comes to the forward play because we've always known how clever and, and, inter and intelligent uh, footballers that they are, especially with uh, sports that they do have, which sort of have a similar uh, sort of feel and vibe, which I really do enjoy watching, which is the uh, rugby league and NRL. So I think that has been a case where these players have decided that to take their uh, their craft to the next level, and it's very it's very encouraging for uh, for Sanza, for Super Rugby, and going forth to World Rugby. That's true. And just talking about the next level, and I must admit, I don't know all the details. But Phil Kearns, there was talk of him taking over Australian rugby. Good thing, bad thing. How much do you know about it? So, so with with rugby, I think it's always good to have um, sort of old heads, uh, people who are custodians of the game in their country, people who have shown up and have played through the levels, who understand it from grassroots because mm. of the experience. I think that does give a bit of. Um, a structure, it gives a bit of credibility to the whole setup. Um, mm. And most, especially all of us pundits and people who write or who comment about this game, we all seem to know what and how to solve the problem. Yeah. So I guess um, it's all about putting his words into action. It's true. In, in talking about problems, and we just go back here to South Africa, 
the bulls and lions were having problems um, and there seems to be a bit of a relief at the moment. Do you think this has come at just at the right time for them? I think it has. I think it has a lot because um, with with this break in time and there's a lot of introspection that's been going through mm. um, to the players, to the coaching staff, to the unions, to the whole structure of the unions to, to really... Um, take stock and see what has worked, what hasn't worked, and where yeah. can we do, how can we go better? Uh, because the starts that they had have been a nightmare for both teams. Yeah. Um, the Lions uh, leaking trials, like I said. Um, the Bulls uh, could not score a trial for the first three games of the season. They, they structure seems to to have been in a way caught in between trying to play the John Mitchell right B to the old Bulls right B. A yeah. bit of uh, in a way, not having the identity to sort of work from, and then <clears throat> with that said, and then looking in terms of those two teams, their team profile, the players that they do have, and what they have in terms of their resources, a very difficult time. Lots of inexperienced players in vital positions to carry them. I mean, Alton Yanchi has probably been a shining light yes. at, the, at the Lions, although it's a sinking yeah. ship. But his leadership and the way that he's really taken on the challenge has been impressive. It just shows how much this um, World Cup euphoria has really led yeah. the players to set a higher standard compared to what they could be associated with at the lower level Super Rugby. That's so true. And talking about starts, the Stormers came out of the start, starting blocks at an intense pace. Um, and, and should the season continue, do you think they could keep that up? The Stormers, the Stormers, I think they're probably looking at this and saying it's the right time to take a break. The, yeah. the injuries that they've had into the World Cup winning players, I think they've lost about six of those. The captains, Peter Steff, to tour play of the yeah. year. Yeah. Uh, kicks off uh, just the last game that they played against the Sharks, did his, uh, his pictorial. I don't know if there's a strain or a tear. Um, a whole lot of injuries. And, and uh, that really almost done. They... Uh, in progression and, and, and their cohesion because constantly they had to change the whole team and how everyone to to sort of fit in and, yeah. and, and hit the road running which is, which is quite difficult because they had players just falling off the bus the injuries to Bogdan Banambi and uh, yeah uh, and, and not really having that attacking flair that the 90s uh, the man in black used to mm. sort of like encourage everyone around the world and the, and the style and the approach and the way that they went about it. I think it's a time for them to, to, to sit up and sort of sit stock and be like, okay, cool. Where can we go with what we have? What is going well for us? How is our attack not making making or living up to the standards that they've set with their defense? I mean, nailing the Hurricanes in their first game and then going on to leak a few more tries and then they could not score tries. So it, there's, there's a whole lot that they that those teams will be reflecting on at this moment. Ah, so true. And, and talking about a team and a team that's really done well at the moment, and I'm sure they're very grateful for the, the break, is the Sharks. What do you think sort of been the underlying factors to why they've done so well at the moment? I think we, the, the Sharks have really got it right. Uh, they, they've got the right synergy in their side. Mm. Um, the, the, the coaching staff, young and ambitious, inexperienced but very competent in the way that they imprinted what they want to get out of their players and the way that they've gone on making big decisions to their leadership to to look at your arm who has really shown out that he is a world-class player uh, and to, to to the way that the senior players are really taken on the, the job at hand of, of really driving the, the game uh, as, as much as I've, men, I've mentioned the, the coaching stuff but it's been the players that we've been talking about which is a good thing which means that the coaches are, are imparting the knowledge to the players and the players are applying it on the field mm. and I think just the, 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 the transitional play especially from broken play how they get themselves in such an organized default play so that they can attack and become threats against teams. Uh, the will, the upskilling of their forward pack. I know Dave Williams, their the backline coach and their skills coach, is, is very instrumental into that because he's a man who believes and loves the, 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 the rugby ball being put into a place where it can cause trouble to the opposition. 
Wow, it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, holistically, they are really playing a, a great game. And then let's quickly touch on, on the New Zealand side. Um, you know, look at that, like the Blues are looking very comfortable. And obviously the Crusaders have a unique reputation. Do you think they're still going to be up top there or is the African side going to hold them to the number one position? Well, the one thing about the, the Crusaders is um, they, I think they on a, on a winning streak at in Christchurch. I think they mm-hmm. choose the, the one game. They're in a winning streak of about 30 odd games in a row. <clears throat> it's all about winning in Christchurch. And for them to give themselves a place uh, to be in a situation where they play or they playing all their games at home, they're always going to be difficult to beat because records like that, they build a whole lot of trust and they build a whole lot of uh, belief in, 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 in their system mm. and what they mm. can do. And uh, they're always going to be a threat because it's a dynasty that they've built there. And they're on a three-peat now going for a quadruple. <laughs> so, I mean, that that is uncharted territory yeah. and it'll be the first time we ever see a team that has been so dominant and mostly, I could say, in any competition. Yeah, no, so true. And then mm-hmm. when it comes down to the Blues, I think the Blues, what they have got right is um, they've really stripped it down and taken it to the bare core uh, levels of what is it that sort of inspires their young and their youth players that they have. And these senior players have taken charge of the fact that um, with so much expected in the, in the commercial capital of New Zealand, there is a whole lot of responsibility they're really taking upon themselves to really show how much it means for them and to play in that jersey. I mean, these are these are three-time champions of Super Rugby in mm. 96, 97, and 2003. Mm. So going back to those days and really trying to make sure that they can create the new heroes. It's something that has really driven the team and you can see how they're so comfortable with doing their own skin. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. And I just quickly want to go back and, and talking about uh, one individual that's done very, very well for the, sorry, where we go back to the Sharks, it is yeah. Kerwin Bosch and he's done some brilliant work. What do you think has contributed to his form? Um, with Kevin Bosch, Kevin Bosch is a, is a type of player who's who's really shown up every time he's been backed mm. with his coaching, and 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 <clears throat> the fact that Sean Everett is, has made that number ten position his, and he has said it'd be up to him to play himself out of the side. So that has given him an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to start becoming the leader. He is uh, the orchestrator of what is going on with the, the Sharks when it comes to the kicking game, his kicking accuracy for kick chase, uh, transferring pressure, and, and his distribution. I mean, you can see how he fizzes when he gets the ball in his hand and the way mm-hmm. he's so excited mm-hmm. to take on the line. And, and that confidence will lead to him becoming a better defender which is something that he always has to work on. So true. So, so true. Now, Gobani, there's obviously one sensitive issue, I think, on, on everyone's minds. And yes. it's actually been said in, I think, in New Zealand first, that they said South African sides should perhaps play more rugby in Europe. So, you know, with the whole sort of dilemma we're facing with finances, does it make sense to join the Pro 14? Or do we just say, no, we're going to carry on and we're going to play Super Rugby? I think when it comes to where South Africa sort of fits in and how they go about and going forth about growing the game and keeping the game uh, at the high level that it has been for all these years, winning three World Cups. So that's it. If, if it has to come down to it, it has to be a, a decision that is based on business decisions, yeah. uh, logistic decisions, yeah. where if, if we can, with so many teams and corporate, and with so many corporate uh, companies based in South Africa, which are all over in Europe, I mean, that could be another way of putting the that infrastructure back into the right gear and making sure that <clears throat> we can get the best out of it. But for me, I'm still that one person who still believes that the Southern Hemisphere right be um, and how it's it's really shown up in so many years yes. with three world champions, exactly. uh, Australia, New exactly. Zealand. It's where we, it's where every other player wants to compete against, against the players that have uh, been deemed as the best in the world for, for decades. So you want to really attach yourself against those players and it's something that we used to as a Southern Hemisphere. It's such a massive rivalry 
I mean, living that will be, uh, it, 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 it's just, be it'll, different. It'll, it'll be, be so day. different. Yeah. You know, it'll be so <laughs> different and, and it will really, it'll really take time to, to get used to. But at the end, it's all about how do you make this game survive and grow. Yeah, so I'm sure we'll, we'll find out more as we go along. But it's all good. In talking about business, um, I've seen a bit about Shadow Ball and, and how's that going? <laughs> yeah, no, it's been interesting because all, all of a sudden we've, uh, we've built all these uh, we built a Shadow Ball Academy uh, in Johannesburg where we opened to the public. Uh, luckily enough, we got a great relationship with Trinity College, which is based in Wren Park Ridge, and Trinity House, which has been good to us. Uh, what we had to do is, like everyone else, is to adapt our module mm. and try to go digital and coaching the kids via... Um, uh, WhatsApp groups, uh, videos, uh, and, and, and trying to give them feedback and analysis whilst they're still hanging out at home. And it gives them time and a chance for the parents to be involved with their kids and seeing their development and being there to 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 help them sort of understand and, and fall in love with this game, which has given me so much and has given so much joy to the South Africans. No, it's brilliant. Good morning. Glad you're getting involved um, in as in many ways as you can. It's awesome. On- Cheers, man. On a, on a final note, um, you've written a book, the, the Rise of the Dagger. What was the inspiration behind it? Oh, the Rise of the Dagger. It was it was one of those things like I thought of myself when I was still doing separate books in class <laughs> back <laughs> in those days when we used to have standards. Yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. And 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 I remember it was hard for me to find the content that I could really immerse myself in, mm. uh, and and writing a fictional book that could could be a chance maybe to help out a sports person or someone whose inclination is about sports that they can read something that they can relate to and sort of turn to tell stories and anecdotes and use a fictional characters to sort of express <clears throat> and take people through the experience of playing in the Super Rugby and, and using uh, something that they can relate to which is the diversities and, 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 and the triumphs and, and all the trials and tribulations that come as a rugby player. So it's, it's it's all about the life that happens while rugby is being played. Excellent. So I'm going to skip myself one of those books. Sounds brilliant. <laughs> no worries, wife. Pleasure. Kobani, we're wishing you well. Um, is what we can call an uncertain time. But I'm pretty yeah. sure we'll be back on the rugby field sooner than later. Um, yeah, and thanks for all the work that you've done. And thank you for always doing such brilliant shows on Supersport. Oh, it's my pleasure, man. And uh, as I said, being a custodian of this game, you always want to give back. And the only mm-hmm. way we can grow this game is if everyone else can put the game ahead of themselves. Kobani, all the best. Keep working hard. Pleasure, Ryan. Cheers, Thanks, man. All the best. Cheers. Bye. Bye, bye.